watching Swipe. We're in the land of fire and ice for a festive special coming up on the show. Angela explores Iceland's volcanoes with the latest technology that could help predict an eruption. I find out how the country's powerful natural energy could boost its tech status. And we journey to Iceland's capital to meet one of Europe's most successful video games developers. Welcome to Iceland, an island famous for its cold weather and stunning natural beauty. So what's a tech show like us doing here? Well, in this bumper episode of Swipe, we'll be showing you how this Nordic country is embracing technology to make the most of what nature gave it. But at this time of year, we've only got a few hours of daylight, so we better get on with the show. First up, Angela has been checking out volcanoes, of course. This might look peaceful, but beneath the glacier is one of Iceland's most active and dangerous volcanoes. Katla is being closely watched by scientists who say it has the potential to be more damaging than this one which brought Europe to a standstill in 2010. We went to Katla to see how technology is helping researchers predict the next big eruption. Drones like this one allow scientists to monitor seismic activity by capturing footage and collecting data in areas that are difficult to reach. There are several uses for these drones uh, to help uh, the scientists. Uh, one would be to uh, use the aerial images we take to create a detailed uh, three-dimensional map of the area. Um, another would be to put sensors on those drones. Um, or use uh, infrared cameras to monitor the thermal activities of an area. A DJI drone was also used to film within 200 feet of Iceland's Bunker volcano, where the lava reached temperatures of almost 2,000 degrees. It captured a close-up glimpse of nature at its most dramatic. I'm standing in the crater on the glacier covering Katla. The volcano normally has a major eruption about twice every 100 years. The last time it broke through the ice was in 1918 and this caused devastating glacial flooding. And scientists say statistically this volcano is overdue another eruption. As well as using drones to keep an eye on the Earth's movements, scientists are also using advanced sensors and GPS tracking to see where the magma is accumulating. A team from the University of Iceland regularly check on the monitoring stations set up across the most active regions of the country, where data is gathered and fed back in real time. So the technology we use to try to foresee volcanic eruptions includes uh, seismometers to pick up small earthquakes as magma is moving. It, it includes geodetic stations to measure the ground movements uh, in the terms of, of millimeters or centimeters of expansion. And it includes uh, sensors to detect volcanic gas. It is difficult to predict when the next eruption might start and whether previous eruptions can be used as a guide as to what might happen next. But technology like this could save lives by helping scientists get to know Iceland's volcanic systems more closely. Angela Barnes, Sky News. Stay with us. We've got a lot of exciting things coming up on this Swipe Festive special. Throughout the show, we'll be looking at who's had a good year in the world of tech and who's had a year to forget. Plus, I go inside one of the world's most extreme data centers and find out what the cloud really looks like. Different countries have different traditions at this time of year. Here in Iceland, they don't just have one Father Christmas figure, they've got 13. They're called Yule Lads. The children here put a shoe on their bedroom window every night for 13 days in the run-up to Christmas so that the Yule Lads can leave them presents. Nice ones if they've been well behaved. So we are Sky's very own little Yule Lad. Well, technology correspondent, actually. If he would talk us through some of his top toys for this festive season and beyond, here's Tom. Well, yes, Merry Christmas and all that. Mm, that's better. 
on to the gadgets. First up is this Nerf gun. It's a modulus gun, which means you can put all sorts of things to your heart's content, customizing it with things like this stock, this scope, but crucially, it does the important thing that a Nerf gun should do, and it fires lots of bullets. Wonderful. If you're slightly less destructive, maybe more creative, this is a DIY gamer kit from Technology Will Save Us. It's a great way to learn how to build your own games console. You'll have to work out how to put components like this together. Now, the last few years have all been about drones, and look, here's another one. It's a small parrot drone, but the twist is that this drone can, when it's combined with this boat here, go on water and work as a remote control ship. This is a fan, and that's how it pootles along. Finally, transportation. Hoverboards are already a massive cliche, and sometimes they explode. So why not try a pair of rocket skates? They don't actually have rockets in them. Instead, press the buttons on the back, and you'll activate the electric motors, and then it's just a case of gliding gracefully to your destination. Oh, bless. Didn't Tom look great in that hat? Now, remember this. Stay with us to see our take on 2015's tech ups and downs. Data. It's never really been a sexy subject, has it? But as our digital connectivity increases, companies are looking for more places to keep it. Well, here in Iceland, they're capitalising on the natural resources to tap into that need. I got to go inside one of the world's most extreme data centres and I finally discovered what the cloud looks like. Iceland, a land of breathtaking views, rumbling volcanoes, spouting geysers and Viking history. But now it's also home to these data centres. That's right, inside these ugly warehouses are massive hard drives powering the types of internet applications we use on our computers and phones every day. So far, it has three. When we talk about using the cloud, we imagine this thing floating above us. But actually... Go inside this converted NATO base and you see what the cloud really looks like. Companies from all over the world rent this space. Huge computers with billions of calculations taking place every second. But servers need to be kept cool, which can get very pricey. And that gives chilly Iceland an advantage over warmer countries. These openings on the wall allow fresh, cool, ambient air to come into our data center and into our computers. The netting that you see here prevents the snow from coming in and we can do this in Iceland, free cooling, all year long. Along with cold weather, Iceland also happens to be blessed with heat and water in abundance. Almost 100% of its electricity comes from renewable sources. This is the famous Blue Lagoon. It's lovely and warm because it's fed by water that's heated naturally deep underground. That geothermal energy, along with hydroelectric power, means that Iceland can drive its data centres in a very eco-friendly way. But the country still needs a boost from some big Silicon Valley names who have so far opted to put their data in other Nordic countries. Facebook has one in Sweden, Google in Finland, while Apple is putting one in Denmark. Hey, Chris got. Nevertheless, at the University of Iceland, staff working alongside the next generation of tech experts are optimistic. The data centre industry here in Iceland is uh, uh, very young and I think it's just a matter of time when uh, large companies uh, realise the benefits of storing data here because of the low energy prices and the renewable energy. Others say for tech's biggest names to bring their data here, they'll want more than pretty landscapes and cheap electricity. They need peace of mind about connectivity. We have three cables that connect Iceland to the internet. I think we need a lot more than three. And when you have a lot more cables connecting to Iceland, I think they feel a lot more comfortable that they know that if one cable goes down, they can piggyback on others. 
The end of the year is a good time for reflection. So we've nominated our picks of the tech products, brands and personalities that could call 2015 a pretty successful year. But we've also considered those who might not look back on the year with such fond memories. Here's Stu with part one of our tech ups and downs of 2015. Our first up of the year goes to Mark Zuckerberg, who's had a pretty significant 2015. The Facebook founder and his wife, Priscilla Chan, had their first child, daughter Max, in December. And as the couple told the world about her birth, Zuckerberg announced he would be giving away 99% of his Facebook shares, at the time worth $45 billion, that's £30 billion. He and Priscilla will be giving their wealth to causes that help the planet. A big Christmas pantomime-style boo this year for an app called People. The idea was to let you publicly rate other humans like you would give scores to hotels or restaurants online. This received a lot of strong criticism, resulting in the inventors making big concessions, including making the app an opt-in service. It's been a great year for two kinds of emerging technology in particular. Augmented reality and virtual reality, or VR, have been some of the buzzwords of 2015. But you can expect to see much more of this kind of tech in 2016 and beyond. HTC's Vive VR device is due out in April and will compete with Oculus Rift and PlayStation VR, which could be released early in the year. Augmented reality could revolutionise industries like design and medicine, allowing you to over lay virtual images onto the real world. Microsoft HoloLens is in development, although there isn't a general release date yet. We've got plenty more coming up. Stay with us. We're going inside one of Iceland's best known game studios for a go on one of its new releases. And while we're at it, we'll be looking back at the year in games. Welcome back to our Swipe Festive Special from a very chilly but spectacular Iceland. It's currently minus seven degrees Celsius and we've arrived to record snowfall. Still to come on the show. We get nostalgic with a look back at the Swipe Team's 2015 highlights. But first, here's part two of our tech ups and downs from the past 12 months. 2015 has undoubtedly been a good year for space travel and exploration. In September, NASA announced they'd found strong evidence of water on Mars. And then there's Tim Peake, the British astronaut who has blasted off into space for a six-month mission on the International Space Station. It hasn't been a perfect year for Apple, more on that later, but there have been positives for one of the biggest names in tech. The Apple Watch was released in April, and while it hasn't caught on in the same way as the iPhone yet, it's received wide critical acclaim, winning awards from T3, Pocket Lint and Stuff magazine. Apple will also be pleased with its smartphone sales. The iPhone 6S and 6S Plus broke company sales records, with 13 million handsets being sold in the first three days of release in September. Samsung will be pleased with a year that's seen it beat Apple to several awards for its smartphones. T3, Pocket Lint and Stuff Magazine all named the Galaxy S6 Edge Phone of the Year at their annual award ceremonies. The Curve Phone has been praised for its design and features, which have seen it get one over on the latest iPhone releases. They've already made an appearance on our list with an up entry, but 2015 hasn't all been positive for Apple. The biggest down for them was when Taylor Swift refused to put her album 1989 on new streaming service Apple Music. That was because the company said it wouldn't pay royalties to artists during a three-month free trial. Apple changed its mind on the policy the next day. And last and definitely least, our final entry is a downer for hoverboards. Several airlines banned them because of potential fire dangers and national trading standards in the UK confiscated 15,000 of them over the same concerns. There have been doubts about whether it's even legal to ride them on the pavement or on the roads in England, Wales and Scotland. And perhaps most importantly of all, they don't actually hover. Now we've come inside one of Iceland's best known video games developers, CCP Games. And if you've ever heard of the popular sci-fi title EVE Online, come and meet its executive producer. 
Andy, for anyone who doesn't know, just tell us a little bit about EVE Online. So EVE is this online science fiction gaming universe that has actually been live since 2003. And it has this really great community from all over the world who fly spaceships there and fight and trade and tell their own stories. So what are you working on now? Well, at ZCP we've really jumped into virtual reality. Mm, I can see some headsets here. Yeah, uh, I have a game here that our uh, studio in Shanghai is working on, actually. It's called Eve Gunjack. And we're going to have a go because yeah. you've, you've got it set Just up try. for us, haven't you? So what's the aim of this game? So you're operating a huge gun turret uh, at a mining ship. So you have to protect the mining operation from you know, pirates and all kinds of spaceships that are attacking it. Kill them all. How long does it take to design and develop a game like this? Well, it's kind of like normal game development. It takes a team, you know, several months to get going, and then you refine and polish until you're really happy with it. And how long until you see a time when nearly everybody has a virtual reality headset in their homes? Well, I really hope that a lot of people get these ones for Christmas. You can get a hold of these right now, and the game we're playing is also available right now. But I think next year is going to be a big year for virtual reality. 2015 has been an interesting year for gaming. We've had titles brought back from the dead to consoles breaking records. Here's Chris with a roundup. In the year that E3 turned 20, we saw a lot of big gaming announcements. Square Enix surprised everyone by revealing the 90s classic Final Fantasy VII would be getting a next-gen remake. It's something fans had been calling for for more than a decade, but few expected it would ever really happen. Meanwhile, Sony said its missing in action title, The Last Guardian, would be coming out after all. There was big news from EA, who announced the fourth entry in the Mass Effect franchise. And Microsoft revealed that Xbox 360 games would now work on Xbox One, something much demanded by fans. So, those were the big announcements of 2015. But what about the game's releases? Let the legend come back to life. Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain came out to wide critical acclaim. It made $179 million on its launch day. Star Wars Battlefront was released ahead of the latest film in the sci-fi saga, and it became the fastest selling game based on the franchise. While the much anticipated Fallout 4 shipped 12 million copies in just 24 hours. But it was The Witcher 3 that scooped the year's biggest accolades. The open world RPG claimed five awards at the Golden Joysticks, including Game of the Year. And it was another year, another FIFA. This instalment saw the inclusion of female players for the first time. Also flying the flag for women in gaming was Lara Croft. The iconic explorer was back for the second instalment in the revamped Tomb Raider franchise. And there was a return for everybody's favourite Italian plumber. Super Mario turned 30 and Nintendo celebrated the big occasion by releasing Super Mario Maker. There was also some sad news from the Japanese games maker. The company's president and CEO, Satoru Iwata, passed away at 55. 2015 was a year of milestones in the gaming world. Sony's PS4 was the company's fastest selling console ever. And YouTube gamer PewDiePie became the owner of the first channel to hit 10 billion views. So it was a busy 2015. But what will next year hold? Many are predicting it could be time for virtual reality to take off. So 2016 could be just as eventful. Chris Cregan, Sky News. We can honestly say filming this episode of Swipe here in Iceland has been one of the highlights of the year for us. I say one of because the Swipe team have done a lot in 2015. Here's a little reminder of some of our tech adventures. Technology is transforming the skiing and boarding experience. We'll add more layers of intensity to this music. So we've added a synth, a synth line there. What character are you turning me into Today, right now, Today, we are turning you into the bats. Aha! Check it out. That's amazing. Do I, do I look realistic? I mean... Well, you definitely look realistic, but I don't know if you cut the part. This technology, currently being trialled, plugs punters into a digital casino and gives them the chance to win or lose real money. This building is a one-off. Using just solar power, it's able to create enough electricity to keep it running all year round. 
Now we're about to go flying over mountains. That's what we're about to do. I'm going to increase my speed. Very good. Some of the rooms are linked up by radios and CCTV, so you can see what's happening to other audience members, making it feel a bit like you're inside a video game. So this would be my view if I was the camera ball. Hey, look at that. There, there I am. There, there you are. Making a big budget video game takes a lot of work, although it might look like play. The people at TT Games have a dedication to Lego. Do they have names? Uh, yeah, the, the one on the left is called B10, and the one on the right is called N1C, which is short for Bio and Nick, so Bionic. So this is Cycle Superhighway 3, yep. and we're about to get caught on some very special cameras. Right, what we've done for the first time ever is installed some thermal imaging cameras up here to detect cyclists. Assume that anything uh, that you put into digital format is vulnerable. Uh, Even if it's a text, a WhatsApp message? Yeah, I mean, just assume. Telematics is the real theme of the show this year. This unit is being put into every Porsche at the factory level, from the get-go. Here's a demo of state-of-the-art sensor technology, taking sports to new heights. These cables stretch out for over 900 miles around these tunnels, and just like any other connection, if something goes wrong, they need to be fixed. But for that to happen, somebody sitting thousands of miles away needs to flag it up. If sights and sounds just aren't enough for you when you head to the cinema, how about this? It's called 4DX. Seats that move around, air, water and fog effects all synchronised to the action on screen. Woohoo! Woohoo! The seats vibrating! <laughs> Well, there's a few major events on the gaming calendar. E3, a couple of months ago in June, is where all the big games are announced. But uh, Gamescom here in Cologne in Germany is where 250,000 people get to play those games for the first time. And uh, myself as a journalist, I get to play a lot of these games for the first time. We put these all together uh, in a piece of software called Agisoft, and that combines them into a 3D model. Well, I might not look as agile as the footballer, but it's good enough to help design my 3D printed movie costume, if I ever needed one. Well, we did say it gets dark quickly here, and now it has. It's also got a lot colder. It's about minus 10 here on the outskirts of Reykjavik. Thank you for joining us for this very festive swipe. We'll see you again soon. Bless. That's Icelandic for goodbye. <laughs>